Indonesian coffee startup Kopi Kanangan was established in 2017 by Edward Tartanata and James Pranto, and its rise has coincided with the growth in the country's coffee consumption. As of 2019, Indonesia was the world's fourth largest coffee producer, and domestic consumption has almost quadrupled since 1990. One popular drink has been ice milk coffee, made with locally grown coffee beans, froth milk, and palm sugar. And it was around this beverage that Kopi Kanangan decided to build their business. Kopi Kanangan arrived on the scene in Jakarta with a single shop in an office building in South Jakarta with a starting capital of $16,900 and only five staff hires. The startup had sold 700 cups of coffee in its first day of business, and in less than half a year, it was already turning a profit. The company has been compared by many, including Croatia, to China's Luckin Coffee. After Luckin's recent financial scandal, this comparison is no longer flattering. But the two companies do have notable similarities. They're cheaper than Starbucks, they both take advantage of technology when it comes to handling orders, and have both embarked on fast-paced, capital-fueled expansion in recent years. Kopi Kanangan's drinks cost around $1.35 each, compared to $5 for a Starbucks latte. Most of their orders come through delivery services like GoFood or GrabFood, as well as their own app. This allows them to maintain a minimal presence in their shops, which are smaller than sit-down style coffee shops. Fewer staff and smaller locations mean lower operational costs with savings on wages and rent. And one key difference between Luckin and Kopi Kanungan has been that Luckin hadn't reached profitability. Luckin spent heavily on marketing and essentially subsidized its products in its bid to attract customers. Kopi Kanungan's word of mouth and social media popularity means it doesn't have to commit as much to marketing, so it could focus on the quality of their product. Kopi Kanungan's profitability and unique approach to selling coffee through technology has attracted investors since its early days. Investment firm Alpha JWC injected $8 million of seed capital in 2018. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, when many food and beverage businesses were negatively impacted, Kopi Kanungan still managed to attract $109 million in a Series B round, led by Sequoia Capital India. With their Series B funding, they plan to bolster their Indonesia operations and expand to 500 stores by the end of 2020. They also have their eyes on expanding to other Southeast Asian countries. In response to Kopi Kanungan's growth, Starbucks Indonesia also plans to increase its current store count of 440 locations by adding 60 more to match Kopi Kanungan's target and maintain its status as the biggest coffee retailer in the country. Today, Kopi Kanungan sells more than 3 million drinks each month and has over a million customers on their app. And the company is valued at around half a billion dollars, according to Venture Cap Insights. Kopi Kanungan also has plans to further grow their customer base and expand their technologies, as well as to launch a cloud kitchen, unmanned coffee shops, and vending kiosks. In addition to plans to grow beyond Indonesia's borders, the Edward Tertanata also floated the idea of taking Kopi Kanungan public. So can this Indonesian coffee chain become the biggest in Southeast Asia and possibly beyond? <laughs>